Hey guys, and we are back with part two of my television series complete collection. And before we get into the video, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you are updated every time I upload a new video. And I will be sure to link up part one of my television series video, as well as my DVD collection and VHS collection for your enjoyment. Now, without further ado, let's get to part two. Okay, now first up, we got Tales from the Crypt. And I have four seasons. I sort of, I guess, tapped out of buying the rest. I believe there are seven seasons. And there is also a complete series out there in one of those cheapo uh, sets where all the discs are in the sleeves. But here I have um, individual seasons and you know, these are a little nicer. Now, as far as episodes, uh, the one episode that's coming to my head is that uh, episode with the handcuff and the crow or the hawk, the vulture eats that guy's eye out. I could remember that from when I was a kid. That is the ultimate uh, Tales from the Crypt episode. And then I always, um, you know, remember watching this on HBO and like the various cameos, Whoopi Goldberg and um, whoever was uh, popular around that time, Demi Moore. Um, and yeah, I have seen a few of these, like, you know, the Santa Claus episode. Uh, I love that Tales from the Crypt movie from the 70s with uh, Joan Collins. Because remember, this is uh, based off of the comic books. So uh, I believe even if you look inside, it's very kind of like creep show-ish. You know, um, has that vibe going to it. So I always like that Tales from the Crypt movie from the 70s, that British movie. And then remember, there's also the American films Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood. And then there's the animated series Tales from the Crypt Keeper. And then um, I guess the Crypt Keeper just kind of faded away, right? He was just a real culture icon, I guess, in the 90s. And then after those movies and in the mid 90s, he kind of just uh, tis disappeared. So these uh, great horror anthology series, Tales from the Crypt. Okay, next up is Saved by the Bell, the complete collection. Now this was actually my very first YouTube video. I managed to get a, um, a copy of this from Shout Factory and did a review on it. Now, I loved Saved by the Bell as a kid. Uh, the Zach Morris phone and Kelly Kapowski and the Max. One of my favorite episodes is when Je Jesse Spano gets addicted to the caffeine pills and she's like, I'm so excited. You know, it, it's, um, they show how messed up she was over the caffeine pills. And it's funny to think about it now, but it's just that something you don't see in television anymore. You also have uh, Mario Lopez, Lark Voorhees, Dustin Diamond, and uh, Mr. Belding, can't remember his name. And also in the earlier seasons, you know, it was called um, either Goodbye Miss Bliss or Hello Miss Bliss. Something about Miss Bliss, who was the uh, Haley Mills from The Parent Trap. And then they also have um, Saved by the Bell, the college years. And then there was also uh, a few movies. Um, maybe Saved by the Bell goes to Hawaii, something along those lines. And I remember Leah Remini is also in those like beach episodes. And it always seems like that beach episodes was like an entire season. But I think it's only like four or five episodes. It's just that, you know, these re-ran so many times that um, it just feels like a lot more than it was. I didn't even know that this had the college years. It just shows, I guess it just shows that I never really um, watched this stuff. Once I, I have it here, watch a few episodes and then kind of just put it in back to, um, collect dust and here it's called uh, Good Morning Miss Bliss. So yeah, I, uh, I'll have to do a deep dive and in the uh, Saved by the Bell, the complete collection. Next up we have Roseanne, the complete series. And this is another one of these cheapo Mill Creek sets. Roseanne, I have been watching lately on YouTube. She has gone a little over the rails, but sometimes she's still um, entertaining to watch. Now she kind of reminds me of that crazy aunt, something along those lines. But the reason Roseanne was so popular 
in the late 80s and 90s is because, you know, kind of like that Archie Bunker, you knew someone like her. She just kind of reminded you of that all-American blue-collar mom. And she just, I guess, seemed, I don't know, she had a sarcasm, a wit, a cynicism about her, but also very funny, very loving to her children. Uh, let's see, we got, as far as the children, you got um, Sarah Gilbert and uh, <laughs> Michael Fishman, and then there was two Beckys, right? And then Laurie Mal Metcalf, who, um, you know, does a, does a lot of movies, and John Goodman as well. And also Johnny Galecki, who uh, you've seen on The Big Bang Theory. Favorite episodes. Also, there's uh, George Clooney is in this in those uh, early Factory episodes. Those are good ones. Roseanne is famous for her Halloween episodes. Uh, also, Tom Arnold and Sandra Bernhardt are in these as well. And then, uh, you know, in the early seasons, they were good. And then, of course, eventually it jumps the shark. Probably when Roseanne wins the lottery. That might be the last season or the second to last season. That's when it, it goes too far. And, uh, you know, the intro, you know, where it, it circles around the kitchen table. That's always a really good intro. And then they change the intro to have like a the blues traveler song. You know, they put lyrics to the music and hey, it's cute, but it doesn't really work. So uh, these are uh, excellent episodes. I don't think uh, any spin-offs happened from this, but it ran a good nine seasons, dealt with a lot of issues. So a slice of American life, Roseanne. Okay, and now we are going across the pond uh, with Mr. Bean in the whole bean contains all 14 scrummy episodes, which doesn't seem like a lot. And it's probably not a lot. It's just that here, episode one, there's like three skits, you know, so they each have skits here. And probably one of my favorite ones that just come off the top of my head is like when he's in church and he's singing the Alleluia. So just a lot of very funny episodes of Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson, who just never talks. He always just mumbles. And uh, with, with Teddy, his teddy bear. Also another great episode is when he's like meeting the queen and he does the handshake and, <clears throat> and headbutts her. So uh, a lot of, lot of good episodes. When the way he drives his car, you know, always driving on the wrong side of the road. So these are just uh, excellent episodes, bringing back a lot of good memories. And also there was that movie, Bean. Funny how this is a, a British show, but then they made an American film. And the film wasn't that bad either. I remember they were doing like, a, they have like a, a roller coaster simulator of some, of some sort. And then he messes with the, with the functions and everyone goes flying out of their seat. I definitely remember that one. So a good slice of uh, childhood as well is Mr. B. Okay, we're staying in childhood with uh, the Jetsons, the complete original series. And this only ran for one or two seasons back in the 60s. And then they uh, redid them in the 80s. And I kind of remember the 80s episodes, you know, with Judy and that diary with the lips. And I always liked the Jetsons more than the Flintstones, even though the Flintstones, it was that first adult comedy. And the Jetsons, I guess it was a little more silly. Jetson, you're fired. So I uh, always liked the, the Jetsons a little more. And this was just another one of those things where it just seemed like it had a lot of more episodes than it actually did. I think one thing I could specifically remember from this show is that song, Eep Up or Up Up. And um, Elroy and Rosie, of course. How could I forget Rosie? And they don't even have her on the cover here. Or on the back, what a disservice to Rosie the Robot. You know, the future, the, the flying cars, everyone, you know, thought this was going to be the future. Half of it is and half of it is not. But here it is, the complete original series of the Jetsons. And now we're going a little more old school with uh, the Pink Panther. And uh, we got three volumes of these in the Kino Lorber. Now this is another one where it's like I'm almost uh, buying them as a completist type of thing. Not that this was ever my favorite cartoon or whatever, but I guess yeah, that classic theme 
uh, and you know just uh, that classic 60s style and as a kid when you finally see those um, Peter Sellers films those live-action Pink Panther films you're just so mad that it wasn't a live it wasn't a full film of this like after the opening credits and then when the when the movie actually starts you're like wait a minute Where's the Pink Panther? So um, that more than anything is like the, the memories. And of course, these are just really good cartoons like Mr. Magoo um, has that kind of vibe and style, you know, Rocky and Bullwinkle also. So here we go, the Pink Panther. Another one of that same style is uh, Popeye the Sailor Man. Uh, this is like older though, from the 30s, I believe. So yes, and you know, 17 uncut cartoons. I think even on here they're, um, you know, talking about the cultural, you know, uh, significance or, you know, you may be offended at uh, some of the cartoons in here. So that's another good reason to, to have some of this stuff. And on top of it, it looks good. You know, these old school Paramount film, Technicolor, Cinecolor and Polar Color negatives. So, you know, real animation. Popeye the Sailor Man. All right, so we were just talking about the Jetsons and here I got the six seasons of the Flintstones in these old school DVD cases. Now, I know that they released these on Blu-ray. So I um, always had this, I always liked these old Hanna-Barbera, you know, style packaging from the DVD days and um, I just had this sort of, I guess, fascination with um, collecting them. I didn't collect a, a lot of them. Look, you know, you see I have a Scooby-Doo and um, here is another one, but there's just like so many of these, right? And like I say, I know they just released these on Blu-ray. I'm not gonna get them. And they are on um, Tubi. I just saw, I think even on Tubi, they're they're running those Blu-ray remastered. They look remastered. So, um, yes, uh, Flintstones, the original adult uh, comedy, right? Before uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam and Gazoo, even though those episodes are pretty cool to watch too. The... Um, you know, uh, Flintstones time traveling, and I, I don't know, so so many good ones, classic ones, Dino, uh, Barney Rubble, Betty Rubble, the movie with John Goodman, that one is a really good movie. All right, the Flintstones. Okay, finally we're getting to my favorite cartoon from a, a kid is uh, Garfield and Friends. Well, one of my favorites because there was just a lot of them, uh, including, you know, I was talking about Muppet Babies in the last one. And they probably all ran on the same network, wherever that Saturday morning cartoon stuff, ABC, or I don't know if it was multiple networks, who knows. But I always loved uh, Garfield, that cynical fat cat who uh, loved eating lasagna, and his owner, John, and his um, dog, Odie, and the cat, Nermal, who he would always mail to Abu Dhabi. So, uh, loved watching um, Garfield. And also, uh, there was two episodes of Garfield, and then in the middle they showed U.S. Acres or Orson's Farm, depending on which version you see. You know, there's uh, Roy. He was like probably the funniest ones out of those uh, U.S. Acres. There's a Power Pig or I don't know, but there, he 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 used to dress up as Power Pig. I remember that. So another one, like I say, I I love these ones. Garfield, based on the comic strip, and um, I think they even remade these, but. You know, I, I can't keep up with all that stuff. And then they had the live action movies where he was voiced by Bill Murray. That was a, uh, Bill Murray did a really good job of voicing the voice of Garfield. And here we have uh, Garfield and Friends. Okay, we are going into, back to Comedy Central territory with Crank Yankers. And here I have, I guess, three sets season it's only season one and two but it says season two volume one and season two volume two and just like 
you know, I was saying with Reno 911, it's really the first few seasons, like the ones I have here, season one and two, that are just uh, the funniest ones. Uh, so many of the, you know, comedians, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Sarah Silverman, um, amongst many others, and there would be celebrities doing the prank phone calls. You know, so if you have those good memories of doing prank phone calls yourself, or crank calls, crank calls, prank calls, whatever you want to call them. If you have memories of doing that as a kid or as a young adult, this uh, this will resonate with you. Here you have Elmer Higgins and uh, I can't remember his name, the Ed, uh, Ed the Slow Adult, and uh, Hadassah. So, you know, these ones are really funny. I still think about some of the, the skits today and, you know, just really funny to just take the piss out of people sometimes. And uh, this is Wanda Sykes and um, maybe Jim, Jim Florentine. I mean, I, I really loved watching uh, Crank Yankers all the time. Uh, Cammy, love Cammy, the, the horny. The, that's a great episode. She's so horn, horny and calls like a computer geek. And, you know, she's like having an orgasm on the phone. And the guy's like, oh, uh, I, can I come over to your house and, you know, fix your computer? <laughs> so these are really good ones to watch. And then, you know, when they brought the celebrities in, that's when it started going downhill. Like Eminem and uh, Snoop Dogg. Those were never funny. I, I don't know. There might be a good Snoop Dogg one on here where he goes, do you like tapes or CDs? And then he's like, well, see these nuts in your motherfucking mouth. So I don't know. Some of it's okay. But I like always like uh, Elmer Higgins and, and Hadassah. <laughs> Those are the best ones. So um, Crank Yankers. Next up is Dynasty, the 80s classic from Aaron Spelling uh, with, um, I believe it's John Forsyth or William Forsyth. One of the Forsyths, John Forsyth, I was right. Linda Evans, Joan Collins, uh, the 80s uh, primetime soap opera, you know, excess, uh, along with Dallas. But um, for some reason, I like uh, Dynasty a little uh, better. You know, Heather Locklear is in here, and we got um, seasons one through four here. I believe it's up to maybe season seven or nine. I think they even did a remake. That's all I could say. It's just the, the, the Carringtons, uh, whatever rich oil business they have, and um, the life of being uh, rich, and all the cattiness that goes with it. A good cat fight between Joan Collins and Linda Evans. A good cringy dance scene from Heather Locklear. Remember all this stuff you can find on YouTube. Like I say, this was uh, Aaron Spelling. He went on to uh, do Beverly Hills 90210 and uh, all that soap opera over the top stuff. Dynasty. All right, we are coming down to the wire here. We have our final two series to go through. And here is one of my favorite series from the 80s as well is the Golden Girls, all right? All seven seasons with uh, Beatrice Arthur, Estelle Getty, and uh, Rue McClanahan and Betty White as the four uh, single elderly women living in Miami. I used to make fun of this show just like a lot of people made fun of this show, but until a friend got me into it and said, no, you really have to watch this show. <laughs> and then once you, once I got into it, there was just like no turning back. And uh, so glad to have all the seasons here, seen them all many, many times. And it's just so funny how much this show has uh, blown up over the years and what a cultural impact it has. I mean, there are cruises uh, dedicated to the show and even on this I could name a few episodes off the, the third season in particular grab that dough and so many I have talked about the importance of this series and uh, a lot of the issues they have talked about and just how it would never happen in real life you know the the four women living together you know Sophia who just recovered from a stroke Rose from Minnesota uh, Dorothy living with her mother as a substitute teacher and Blanche, you know, the fiery and horny gal. Uh, great series, very funny. Here we go. 
the Golden Girls. Now, finally, we got a huge stack here. I think you could even see it right here, but we got 11 seasons of The Simpsons, all right? I think there are, I don't know how many seasons, 20, 30, I believe they're still airing them. So let's start from the top, right? You know, we got the first five seasons and started off from a Tracy Ullman cartoon. Um, you could uh, see those first, those beginning first drawings, you know, how, how terrible they were. And even this DVD release is so old, I don't even think there's a play all function on here. But the first season has very good episodes, including that babysitter episode. The voice of Penny Marshall does that uh, psychotic babysitter. And also the Christmas episode is a, is a classic one, you know, Simpsons roasting on an open fire. And that just makes me uh, think of Patty and Selma right off the top of my head. And there's so many classic characters on this show. And I think in the second season, there might be that famous episode with that psychiatrist, Dr. Marvin, and they all beat each other on the head over the sticks. Here we got Apu, Mr. Burns, and uh, either Patty or Selma again. Man, just uh, so many classic episodes. Who Shot Mr. Burns was a, a huge, you know, everyone tuned in to watch those, those two episodes, Who Shot Mr. Burns. And it turns out that Maggie did it, right? <laughs> Silly. The fifth season, I guess one of my favorite episodes. I don't know if it's from the fifth season, but around that time when Lisa becomes um, a vegetarian and they show that video of uh, the cows going into getting slaughtered, uh, Troy McClure. I'm telling you just the, the first... 10 seasons of this is really where it's at as far as the, the cultural impact of, of television and just the writing and how funny it is still to this day. Um, Lisa versus Malibu Stacy, <laughs> uh, Snowball and Santa's Little Helper and Ralph Wiggum and Barney, Moe the bartender. Uh, the Treehouse of Horror, the, the yearly horror episodes, Itchy and Scratchy, the movie. Itchy and Scratchy Land or, or um, Duff Land, you know, when they go on the, the roller coaster and he gets stuck upside down. Oh my God, there's just uh, so many episodes. I could just go on and on. Whacking Day, Krusty the Clown, Krusty gets canceled, Cru Camp Krusty. I mean, I just uh, love these episodes. I don't know when it started to get bad, but I do remember when I started to check out. Probably that um, episode where they go to the beach and Christina Ricci is in that episode. So I remember that being probably one of the last uh, great episodes. And also maybe in the later seasons with uh, John Waters. Um, that one was a good one. <laughs> so, so many good ones. Um, the Australian episode, now I'm in America, now I'm in Australia, America, Australia, America, Australia. Whew, so many uh, funny episodes. Uh, Otto, my name is Otto, I love to get blato. Uh, Disco Stew, Lunch Lady Doris. <laughs> Principal Skinner, Edna Krabappel. I just, I just realized that I was holding the first fifth, the first five seasons let me get the next six seasons <laughs> all right and here we got the next six seasons and um you know what what was it guys named cletus ned flanders you know the the death of maud and then uh rod and ty can't sleep clown will eat me uh so many things coming oh uh willie the um <laughs> the groundskeeper willie who shot mr burns okay I, I got um, the, the memory of the PETA <laughs> when Marge starts her own business and gets like a food truck. <laughs> when they go to New York and remember there's like a 9-11 conspiracy that uh, they look at a, a magazine with the, with the Twin Towers and he actually parks his car outside of uh, the Twin Towers. Oh man. Um, oh, I love when Marge joins that... Uh, 
that rich fancy country club and she wears the same dress <laughs> over and over and she alters her dress till till she destroys it bart's clubhouse was um awesome you know didn't you always want a clubhouse of your own like that or a tree house you know his friend millhouse the bully what was his name ha ha nelson man i could just uh go on and on here um bart sells his soul that one um that one was a good one too i'm trying to think of uh you know i i thought of a lot i've thought of a lot here oh the um sherry bobbins because i'm seeing here simpsons califragilistic sherry bobbins one of the worst episodes is probably that music episode the musical episode where they're where they're singing can't remember what season it was but um yeah sherry bobbins i mean when Edna and Skinner uh, date, um, what, whatever Lisa's uh, teacher's name was, the independent thought alarm that, uh, oh my God, so classic. As you can see, I, I could just get so many memories just flooding up as I uh, keep talking about this. And then, you know, they just kind of missed the mark with um, the movie. The movie was okay, but I mean, you could just, I could definitely just uh, watch these over and over again and never watch new episodes. You know, I don't care what they're about. So, we have the all-time classic, The Simpsons. All right, guys, and that about does it for this edition of my complete television series collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. Tell me your favorite Simpsons episodes or your favorite TV shows of all time. And I will see you in the next video.